How's it going, everyone? So sorry I haven't done a video in a little bit. Uh, it's it's uh, I need to get better about that. I think I just need to make my setup a little bit um, a little bit more automatic. You know, I got my camera up on some boxes. I know that once I do this and record it, I gotta go edit the thing and and upload it and pick a thumbnail. Anyway, all that stuff. And then I think, well, I could just sit down and start coding or or working on something and and not have to be bothered with the, the whole the whole setup. Although, of course, once I do get a video up, I'm pretty happy about it. So I just keep that in mind. Um, I think in my next place, well, I'm in an Airbnb right now. I think in my next place, I'm just gonna have a corner of a room or something dedicated with everything already set up where if I get an idea or thing I wanna talk about, I'll just sit down, hit record, and then some magic will happen where you know the audio and video will just be uploaded automatically over Wi-Fi to my computer, ready to go. Maybe just edit a few things together and hit upload and just streamline the whole process. It's it's fairly manual still. Even though now that I've stopped editing, you know, editing out, like just going through and editing everything out like a lot of YouTubers do, I do like the just talking sort of thing, even if there are pauses and, and I'm okay with that for now. So there's not too much editing I do these days. Um, and uh, we'll see, we'll see where that goes. So. In any case, the thing I did want to talk about was focus and, and coding. And a bunch of people have written to me recently, which which has been awesome. Um, I've gotten a couple of amazing messages, uh, you know, on, on Instagram. One very recently from um, a CMU uh, uh, student, and uh, you know, you know who you are, and that was just an awesome message, and it really inspired me. I think you know, one thing that he said is. The, the impact you can have on someone is not captured, it can't be captured in, you know, view counts and, and, uh, and whatnot on Medium or YouTube. And, you know, you, you can remember that everyone's an individual and everyone's going through something different. It's going to take away different messages from things that you might have to say. So I think that's a good reminder, um, which kind of pushed me to do this video. And the thing I want to talk about is just learning how to code uh, and how people should approach it. A number of people have told me that they're learning how to code and you know they they read my article uh, ABC which I wrote I think the original was eight years ago now um, which is a while ago um, but uh, I think it still applies today and the whole idea is that you know if you want to get good at coding you just like anything you need to you need to do it you need to do a lot of, of it and you need to you know you need to work hard at it um, there's no shortcuts really I think you know, to be at the top of your game, you need to work hard. Um, you know, if you're, pick, pick any, you know, really anything, even if you're washing dishes, to be the best dishwasher, and I used to wash dishes, at, uh, that's how I got started my first job at Boston Market. Um, if you want to be the best, you got to work hard, right? There was another guy, he worked his ass off, and he was much better and faster at, at, at getting through a stack of dishes than I was, you know, when I was like 16 years old. Um, but the question is, like, what what are you working hard at, right? Like, you kind of have to pick your game. Uh, if you want to be at the top of your game, think about what game you're playing, right? Uh, for me, coding is just awesome because there's so much leverage built in. You can build things with a few lines of code, and I say a few, a few hundred, few thousand, that is interesting, right? My first startup secret, I built a little startup, or a little startup, I built a little... Uh, just a little weekend project that that a couple months later turned into Secret, which valued at $100 million in the first few weeks of its launch, right? It was a, it was a fast rise. You look at um, products like recently, like Clubhouse, that get really popular and, and go for astronomical valuations on speculation. But really, it's a simple app when you think about it. And probably if you sat down to build it, assuming you have experience with iOS, like you could probably build that, knock that out in a week. Right, the, the most basic form, obviously it's evolved. Um, and that's not to take away from, from its merits, right? I think um, timing, luck, positioning, all that sort of stuff obviously it comes into play. But really it's just a matter of, of executing and doing it, right? Um, so anyway, back to what I was saying about learning how to, how to code. Um, you know, the, like I said, you have to put work into it. You have to be able to focus. And unfortunately, I think these days, like it's again, it's really, really hard to focus. And I've done videos on this in the past. I don't understand how certain how well. Let's just say you're trying to learn something. You're learning how to code, and if you're sitting down at the computer and you know you're still allowing yourself to be distracted, you get messages, you get um, 
you're looking at social media, maybe you're waiting for a compilation, uh, and then, yeah, let's just check Twitter real fast. It's probably the worst thing you could do. For me, I've found one of my superpowers, and I've more recently had to do this explicitly, whereas when I was younger, I guess, I was just doing it automatically, um, which is to sit down for hours at a time and just focus on that one thing, right? Okay, you can, of course, Google things and like, you know, you know the answer to something, um, but staying on that one focus um, for an extended period of time, I think really, you know, where you kind of just realize when you snap out of it, you've just been completely drawn into what you're doing. I think that, um, you know, maintaining that level of focus when you're coding and building something and just like, even if you're learning, if you're trying to solve a problem, you're just like banging your head against the wall um, is, is, is what you need to do. It's hugely valuable. It's, it's how I've learned the most. And there's a separate thing to that. It's not just been about sitting down and coding and sitting down and going, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just write some data structures and do some stuff or I'm gonna learn this task. I think it's more than that. For me, it's always been about an idea that I've had that I've been really passionate about that I wanted to see exist. So I'll get an idea for something, a thing that I wanna build. And it could be related to work. It could be my day job if I'm working on a specific project. Um, or it could be a side project that I'm really excited about. I remember when, you know, I was learning how to play piano uh, when I, well, I'm still learning how to, how to play. It's been a couple, few years now, but when I first started learning, I was like, okay, well, I, I have an idea for this app that's just gonna show me some chords. Um, you know, it's just a simple app. It plugs in MIDI to my digital piano, which I, I don't use anymore, but um, it'll show me some chords, like flashcards, and I play that chord, it detects it, and then it moves on to the next. It's like something that simple I thought could be really powerful and help me just like see chords, help me with my sight reading and be able to play them quickly and just go through them. Um, and so I was like, that's an awesome idea. Like I need that. And so I crack and I use that motivation to also take a new technology that I haven't really been, haven't used, but I was interested in. In this case, it was Flutter um, to build an iOS application. So I was kind of like linking this passion and desire for, you know, for something to exist to learning a new technology, building a, a new thing. Um, and that, cut because that, that desire and that motivation is what keeps you going, I think, and it gives that sense of urgency, which is important to learning, um, sense of urgency to, to the, the thing that you're working on. Um, it helps you push through, right? Sometimes you're not gonna push through, sometimes you go, ah, you get a different idea, and that's great, that's fine, because what happens? Well, you did some stuff, Maybe you didn't finish the project, but hopefully you learned some things along the way. It's like an, it's a net positive win. And so, like I said, for me, when I'm interested in something, I find an interest, whether it's something at work or it's something on the side, you know, setting aside that time, pushing through to it, um, making sure I'm not distracted when I'm working on it is really where I get the most gains um, in my learning journey, uh, which obviously I'm, I'm still doing. And that even leads me to when I'm, working at a company, let's say, you know, as a principal engineer, right? You, you know, you're, you're, you're um, you know, say the, you're, you're an executive level or something like that. And, you know, maybe you're expected to be an architect and you're just in designs and like creating big systems and thinking big, big you know, uh, thinking about strategy and all that. And that's all great. And I, I think that's true. But sometimes I'm, you know, I'll work on a project and I find myself doing the work that I would have been doing when I was, you know, an entry level engineer, like coding a project or building something. Um, and I think that's okay because A, I'm coding and I love it, right? And I'm, I'm building something, I'm doing something that um, you know, needs to exist at the company that I'm working at. I need to build, it's for a project, so it's a net positive. But also I'm, 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 I'm in the middle of it, right? I'm, I'm working with other engineers. I'm understanding how the systems work. I'm actually getting my hands dirty so that I can talk about it with, with other engineers. I can, you know, I'm not just at this high level strategic level. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm actually in it. I'm building empathy for what these systems are um, and how they work. And again, that's, that's a net positive. And so when I'm, you know, when I'm working at a, at a company at that kind of level, I find myself bouncing back and forth quite often between, you know, working on designs, working on architecture, um, having oversight over into projects, um, shaping things, all that sort of good stuff that you'd expect. Um, but also I will spend, you know, 
four hours in a day just coding a feature, or building a thing, or a weekend building a thing, um, just to, to keep sharpening my blade and to keep keep myself motivated. It's 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 been incredibly important, which is why I'm not a huge fan of of um, being a pure people manager. Not to say that they're not important. It's just um, if I'm not in the systems, or at least can't you know I I can't spend some time doing that. I'm not going to be I'm not going to be happy uh, day to day. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. So back to again learning how to code. I think the most important thing is to find something you're really interested in, something you want to see exist. Um, you know, recently for me, it's been day trading. I had this stupid idea. Well, I don't know if it's stupid yet. I'm still working on it. But this idea to help my day trading by building this this little tool that helps me manage my exit positions. And I found myself building in C++ again, which has been amazing, right? Um, I, I, why else would I do that? But I was like, fine. And I was excited about this thing existing. And who knows where it'll go? Again, I'm, I'm coding, which is good. Um, I'm learning about trading and building software, which could be good. Who knows where that goes? Um, so again, it's, it's net positive. Um, but in order for me to make progress, I need to set aside that time. You know, I'll do in the mornings a lot when I'm when I'm, my brain is fresh before I eat breakfast, I'll set aside three hours, maybe four hours, and just and just fo- get in the zone and focus on stuff. And that's that's um, you know periods of that almost every day, uh, and you will um, you'll get there. So starting to learn how to code, make sure you have an idea, something you're just ex- excited about. It could be building a data structure for all I care, but you're intrinsically excited and you want to see the results of it, and just set aside the time and go after it and do that over and over again. Um, and before you know it, you will, um, you'll, you'll feel comfortable uh, and then you'll be learning new things consistently. Uh, and that's, that's awesome. So anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about today. I'm already coming up on 12 minutes. I, I always think about like, you know, when I have an idea, it's like, oh, is that enough to talk about in the amount of time? Uh, it's like, th- I think like, oh, that'll just be a three minute video. And of course I just ramble on for 12 minutes, but that's fine. Um, so I guess it's a good sign I'll, I could do more of these, even though if the idea is um, maybe feels like it won't fill up, I don't know. I try to aim for about 10 minutes. Um, so that's, that's it. If you wanna, you know, feel free to ask questions. Like I said, I love the questions and the comments that I get. Um, it inspires me to do new videos. Um, I love to hear from everyone and uh, you know, ABC, I guess, always be coding is, is, um, is, is my philosophy and, and how I think about these things. So um, please uh, subscribe or, or um, most importantly, just leave a comment. I, I love the comments. That's the most important thing. I don't, likes and all that's good, but um, comments are where it's at. So um, uh, I encourage you to do that. So anyway, if you're watching this on Friday, enjoy your Friday, enjoy your weekend, uh, and we will talk next time.